measures of dispersion. Let's look at the lecture outline. We'll start with the definition. Move on to discuss range, variance, standard deviation, and then coefficient of variation. So measures of dispersion looks at how the values are related to each other, whether they are clustered or they are widely apart. So we looked at measures of averages in one of our episodes, which the link is provided about. So we talked about mean, the median, and the mode. They helped us to identify a focal point for which we can make meaningful drawings. This measure of dispersion will help us to know the positions of the values in relation to the measures of averages. So for the measures of dispersion, we have four. The range, the variance, the standard deviation, and then the coefficient of variation. Let's look at them one after the other. We'll start with the range. So this is the difference between the lowest value in the frequency distribution and then the highest. So the purpose of the range is to help us determine the length of the figures that are being presented in the distribution. Now, if the range is higher, it means that there's a possibility of the values being distantly apart. If it is lower, there's a possibility that the figures are close or clustered. So the variance talks about how the values are clustered or distantly apart from the mean. So to get the variance, we'll find the difference between each of the variable and the mean. After that has been done, we'll square those differences and then we find the arithmetic average of the square differences. Now, after we get the variance and it is higher, it means that the values or the observations are distantly apart from the mean. Now, if the variance is lower, it means that the values are closely around the mean. When we come to standard deviation, standard deviation also talks about the spread of the values from the mean. The difference is that standard deviation takes the square root of the variance as its estimation. So the coefficient of variation is the ratio of the standard deviation to the arithmetic mean. So you get that by dividing the standard deviation by the arithmetic mean. So the higher the coefficient of variation, the higher the dispersion of the values around the mean and vice versa. Let's test our understanding. So a restaurant has recorded the number of orders received per hour over the past day and has produced the table below. The number of hours it received an order is seven. The number of hours it received two orders each is six. The number of hours it received three orders is three. The number of hours it received four orders is four. And the number of hours it received five orders is three. So we have to calculate the range, the variance, the standard deviation, and the coefficient of variation. So for solution, let's start by calculating arithmetic mean because we will need that to find the difference between the values and the mean. So for the mean, the formula is the summation of the observation divided by the sum of the frequency. When we come here, the x is the value f is the frequency, fx is the total frequency. So for the value of one, its frequency was seven, total frequency was seven, that's the multiplication. The two, total frequency will be 12, total frequency of three will be nine, that is three multiplied by the frequency three. For number of orders of four, frequency was four, total frequency is 16. The number of orders being five, the frequency was three, total frequency is 15. So the sum of the frequency is 23, sum of the total frequency is 59, which will lead to an arithmetic mean or average of 2.57, which is 59 divided by the 23. Now that we found the mean, we'll move on to further calculations that will help us arrive at the solution. So the X will now be the value, which is the number of orders. F will be the frequency for each order. Fx is the total frequency that's multiplying the value by the frequency x minus the mean then we square the difference between the value and the mean then we find the total frequency of the squared difference we'll start with one order the frequency was seven the total frequency which is one by seven is seven when we less the mean of 2.57 from one we get negative 1.57 the square of negative 1.57 will give us 2.46, which 
When we multiply the 2.46 by the frequency of 7, it gives us 17.22. The next of order 2, the frequency was 6. Total frequency is 12. That's 2 by 6. When we less 2.57 from 2, we get negative 0 0.57. When we square negative 0 0.57, we get 0 0.32. 0 0.32 multiplied by a frequency of 6, we get 1.92. The third order had a frequency of 3. Total frequency will be 9. When we less 2.57 from 3, we get 0 0.43 positive. Squaring it will give us 0 0.18. Multiplying it by the frequency of 3 gives us 0 0.54. Order 4 will give us total frequency of 16. That is, x frequency of 4 multiplied by the 4. Less than the mean from the value will give us 1.43. Squaring it will give us 2.04. Multiplying it by the frequency of 4 will give us 8.16. So order 5 had a frequency of 3. Total frequency of 15. When you less the mean from the value, you get 2.43. When you square it, you get 5.9. When you multiply it by the frequency, you get 17.7. Now, the sum of the frequency is 23. The sum of the total frequency is 59. The sum of the multiplication of the frequency by the squared difference is 45.54. So when we come to the range, it will give us 4. The highest was 5, the lowest was 1. The variance will be 1.98, which is the product of the frequency by the squared difference divided by the total frequency of 23. For standard deviation, we'll take the square root of the 1.98 to give us 1.41. Then the coefficient of variation will be 0 0.55. That is the standard deviation of 1.41 divided by the mean of 2.57. Let's start our understanding again. So GKA Limited has recorded the total of sales made by employees for the month of January 2023. In the following table, sales below $1,000 is 30. From 1000 to below 2000 is 20. From 2000 to below 3000 is 10. From 4000 to below 5000 is 40. We are now to calculate the range, the variance, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. So for solution, let's calculate the arithmetic mean, which is the division of the sum of observations and the sum of frequency. We'll start with the sales of below 1000. Again, we have to establish the midpoint, giving us 500. Frequency of 30 will give us a total sales of $15,000. From 1,000 to below 2,000, the midpoint will be 1,500. That is the sum of 1,000 and 2,000 divided by 2. Its frequency of 20 multiplied by the 1,005 will give us $30,000. Sales of 2,000 to below 3,000, the midpoint will be 2,500. That is the sum of the 2,000 and 3,000 divided by 2. Its frequency of 10 will give us a total sale of $25,000. The sales of 4,000 to below 5,000 has a midpoint of 4,500. That is 4,000 plus 5,000, which is 9,000 divided by 2. Its frequency is 40. So multiplied by 4,500 will give 180,000. When we sum the frequency, it will give us 100. When we sum the total sales, it will give us $250,000. The arithmetic mean, therefore, will be 2,500. That is the $250,000 dollars divided by the 100 frequency. X will now be the midpoint that we earlier calculated. F is the frequency. So for the midpoint of 500, its frequency was 30. The product of the frequency and the value will be 15,000. That is 500 times 30. When we less the mean of 2,500 from the value of 500, we'll get negative 2,000. Squaring negative 2,000 will give us 4 million. Multiplying 4 million by 30 will give us 120 million. For the midpoint of 1,500, its frequency was 20. Multiplying the frequency by the value will give us 30,000. When we less the mean of 2,500 from the value of 1,500 will give us negative 1,000. Squaring negative 1,000 will give us 1 million. 
Then when we multiply the 1 million by the frequency of 20, it will give us 20 million. The next one is 2,500 midpoints. Frequency is 10. Multiplying the frequency by the value will give us 25,000. When you less the mean from it, you give it 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Multiplying by the frequency will still be 0. The next one is 4,500. Its frequency being 40. The fx will give you 180,000. Then when you less the mean of 25 from 45, you get 2,000. Squaring 2,000 positive will give you 4 million. Multiplying 4 million by 40 will give you 160. So summing the frequency will give you 100. Summing the total frequency with the squared differences will give you 300 million. So now coming to the range, we'll have 4,000. Because the highest value was 4,500, the lowest being 500. The variance will provide 300,000. That is the 300 million divided by the 100 total frequency. Standard deviation will give us 547.75. That is the square root of the 300,000 above. Then the coefficient of variation will be 0 0.22, which is the standard deviation of 547.75 divided by the mean of 2,500.